I'm so happy to be invited here today because uh, I'm actually from a special place in the Ministry of Education. This special place aims to harness technology. This talk is especially meaningful to me because in today's uh, technologically advanced world and interconnected world, free education is actually the new king. Okay? Um, if MOOCs is free access, I think MOOC could be a possible future. What uh, Prof. Lai earlier on talked about, uh, what I'm going to talk about is very much grounded on a unique effort at Raffles Girls School. Okay, we are actually teaching students of secondary three, which is a great nine students, to do video uh, analysis. But bearing in mind, having said this, this is a unique effort. Things don't quite pan out the way that uh, we wanted it to do, which is the modeling part, which I will explicate later. Okay, so what did we do? Okay, we used the software called Tracker. So Jitning at the back would be very familiar with the uh, Tracker because uh, we use Tracker extensively. Okay, so he used it with his Wachong students. I, on the other hand, from MOHQ, so I go out to school and help anybody that I, that's interested. Okay, so if you're interested, you can talk for me. Okay, so uh, there's 33,000 Singapore teachers, okay, of which there could be a fraction, maybe say 10% there are physics teachers. Okay, now if you go to Google now and you search for Singapore physics teacher, you get to my blog. It's, it's something that I like to say uh, uh, because uh, it's really very late in the afternoon. Uh, something to cheer you up. Keep you awake. <laughs> if you're not familiar with Tracker, uh, do go and take a look at Tracker because it is a wonderful piece of software released by the Open, open Source Physics Group. Uh, his name is uh, Douglas Brown. Together they, they make the software so good until today that it actually has this wonderful pedagogical effect to it. Like it's called, he calls it video modeling, which uh, myself and uh, uh, Charles, we have actually managed to publish a journal paper about the video modeling. Okay. Why, did, why am I here? Okay. I'm glad that nobody has spoke about it to this extent, uh, but actually I would like to share about universal access to quality resources as a basic human right. Okay, I'm saying this as a personal uh, reflection. Uh, why am I saying this? Is because uh, we want to change physics education. Okay, because a lot of the tools that are being used traditionally, I, I've used crocodile physics, I've used interactive physics. These are wonderful tools. But the unfortunate thing is probably if you are teaching the school system, you will know that a lot of the software are not that cheap and it's not easy to get the students to use the tools if they are not free. Okay, so Tracker happens to be one of the free tools. Tracker has been around since 2003, okay, but it has evolved and Douglas has made progressively a lot of changes to the software. So it has allowed us, so until today, we have created many videos and with the models and the analysis done by the students, we have packaged it together as a TRZ file, which you can just with a single click, open up the file and it is yours to edit okay, and modify and distribute as you see fit for educational purposes. We hang all this powerful tool using a K-12 science education framework. So as Katie has already spoken uh, at some length to this, I'm not going to elaborate and flesh out the, the practices. But essentially, it, this is a very nice framework for us to work upon. Practice one, uh, ask, once students will ask their own questions, okay? Practice two talks about using models and theories. Three talks about planning the and conducting the experiment. These are all basic uh, science inquiry processes which you are very familiar with. I do not need to dwell into it. So practice four talks about analyzing, practice five, uh, mathematical thinking. This is something new. Mathematical and computational thinking is something new, so you should pay attention to that. Okay. Uh, number six is developing explanation. Okay. Number seven, evidence-based arguments okay, and uh, discussions. And finally, to communicate your solutions and uh, hypothesis. I'm here because I'm allowed to speak. I'm not actually allowed to speak, but we still come anyway, right? <laughs> okay. So, uh, these are my personal reflections because having been involved in a project where we met probably 200 students from RGS Raffles Girls School, so all the secretary students are being mentored by the teachers. Uh, there are three physics teachers there, so I support the teachers. So, from our endeavor, I find that actually it is, you just need these four steps that are not well fleshed out yet. And you can actually get students to behave very much like physicists. 
Okay, now what are these four steps that I'm talking about? Okay, practice one is about asking questions. Practice two, use models. Practice three, computational and mathematical thinking. And practice eight, communications. Okay, practice one, ask question. Okay, in our interaction, the students, we find that they're actually very hard. Can you imagine sec three students asking scientific questions? Can you imagine 14 years old? It's very difficult. So therefore, we need to scaffold their questions. So we were thinking that if the question was modelable, okay, modelable, okay, it would greatly enhance the use of the tool and the science framework, the K-12 science framework, to allow them to, be to behave like scientists. Okay, so in this particular picture, uh, if it's clear to you, uh, I hope, that this is the girl, okay, to get the, okay, this is the girl who flipped herself rolling down an inclined slope. She flamed herself doing the roller blade thing at this particular angle. Uh, the red dots actually represent the actual tracking of the motion. And the green dots are actually a force model which I have created to mentor the students. Okay? Because we, we wanted students to uh, use computational and mathematical thinking to understand and represent the motion. So that is where the, the angle is. Like I was telling Jitney over a tea break, I think this is uh, Earth's, this is a powerful way for students to learn. Okay, interesting question. Okay, really, do you really need more students to tell you the value of gravitational acceleration? 9.81? Do you really need more reports, more analysis, verifying this universally known constant? So, she was claiming a uh, a sailing event of which she was trying to see what was the uh, physical quantities associated with a particular maneuver that the sailor need to do okay, while she changed position in the sail. Okay, so this student was filming. Now, the unfortunate thing is that the camera is also on a boat which is moving. Can you understand how difficult it is to, to as a reference frame that's moving in this particular video clip? There is no way that video analysis can help you to analyze these uh, velocities and acceleration accurately. Okay? So what we did was we mentored a student to say, hey, there's actually another sail here which you can assume. So you have to ask the student, now when you film this, do you, does the other sail look like it was moving at constant velocity? So if the student says yes, then we can get that assumption. We can continue to allow uh, using tracker to use this as a movable reference frame. And all the data actually then will come up very nicely, <laughs> referencing the, the, moving, the moving reference frame. So with that, we thought uh, that is what I can share in terms of asking interesting questions. Number two, okay, using models. Now this, this particular practice, I must, I must quantify and say that it is not very well practiced, okay? Because what happened is uh, probably a lack of time, lack of uh, knowing that there are actually physics simulations they can use. Uh, it was running already. The, the student already progressing in a mentorship program. There's this model you can use, okay? So, uh, but when I was in RGS, I was very happy. So, we, we, because I have wealth of knowledge and experience uh, dealing with open source physics, so I happened to customize simulations. So, I know what a simulation, what kind of simulations have been modeled before. So, I can suggest to the students to search for them on my blog. And from there, they download a the simulation, and then from there, they can actually do a very nice... If the student were to do a rolling down the inclined plane, we have an equivalent. Now, open source physics allows you to create simulations that runs on the Android and the iOS platform. It is essentially cross-platform. If I'm not wrong, maybe even it works on BlackBerry and all that, okay, but we need to test on the browser. Okay, in my experience, the only browser they didn't run was Internet Explorer 8. Okay, the rest runs perfectly. Okay? So I think, uh, so back to the point, uh, using models has a place in allowing students to further deepen their analysis. Okay, okay this is where I will play a video clip. Okay, practice 5 is core mathematical and computational thinking. Uh, because there are several maneuvers uh, that I need to do on tracker, and I can't be doing this and talking at the same time. And then continue in this motion. 
So I'm going to show you the video analysis that was done by the student. Okay, so it's very nicely done. As you can see that the red dots represent the motion of the part of the tennis ball. So now I'm going to demonstrate how the learning can be made more powerful by using this thing called the video modeling by Open Source Physics Tracker. So I actually have a pre-made kinematics model, uh, but I will not show it at the moment. I will just show you what I have done as uh, several breakups of the actual motion. I have broken it up into free fall. Free fall, so this is the free fall part. And then eventually there will be a free fall uh, up thrust, followed by the up thrust and the drag inside the water. And then you notice there's a little bounce out of the water, which I call it the bounce up. So we will model the motion of the tennis ball until here. Okay, because the rest will be pretty repetitive and uh, easily done. So what we do is uh, you need to do a create a new kinetic model and then we recreate it over here under free fall. In this model, when you click on the model builder, it will uh, show you what is the variables inside this model. So mass is 1 by default, we do, do not need to change it. Uh, X in this case will be 0. And this is actually the Y kinematics equation. So you can see from here that actually these equations are actually taken from a very simple if the time is lesser than 0 0.29 then it will do these various equations expression with a t square and then a t and then followed by a standard coefficient a t less term then followed by comma zero so what it does is if t is lesser than this it will run the first statement else it will run zero the second statement zero so how do we propose a student become like scientists and be able to use mathematical and computational thinking? So in any of this panel, we would like the student to do an analyze. With this, it will come up with the data tool. It is possible for the student to select the region of the data that fits pretty well. So let's say it's from T0 to T. 0 0.267 and for this region of the motion is under free fall so the student will select from a list of fit the parabolic fit and from here be able to do the parabolic fit with the parameters a b c being the coefficients of this equation and having these values so uh, i would like you to remember the number negative 2.137 negative 0 0.1967 and followed by this 0 0.2310 these are actually evidences that a student can use to build a model so I'm going to progress to show you how you can use this in a model building way so in this model like I said here okay the student were to key in these values here so you key in this number here 0 negative 0 0.2137 over here then followed by the t square term as because it is a quadratic uh, equate model then followed by negative 1 uh, 0.1976 for the t term and then followed by the last term without the t which is 0 0.2310 and then followed by comma uh, 0 which cause that's the that's the if statement that requires it to do if this is true it will do this else it will do zero okay so this is uh, you can key as one if you want okay so <clears throat> with this let's see what the model can do now let's select it to be visible and you can see that it matches the motion pretty well okay until the time where it is obviously greater than t greater than zero point then you find that the ball is always at the zero coordinate okay now by a uh, so now how do how does a student know that they have done a very good model so you can actually do a comparison of the free fall and you can do a comparison with the free fall over here as well so this will allow you to see how well the model that you have proposed matches up with the real data so i can see that this actually matches very well whereas this is pretty well but uh, eventually it doesn't fit quite well okay now through these iterative steps where the student propose models uh, stage by stage, uh, the student can now propose a different, a more refined model that extends 
the motion into the water so they can actually do another nested if statement inside okay and with this model uh, we can actually now just very quickly click on it and make it visible and you can see now that when I click the play button it actually matches the motion of the real object pretty well okay that, that gives an indication of how robust your model is able to represent the real life motion okay and you can likewise do a compare and see the various representations okay now lastly the most uh, I have managed to build a model until it, it bounces over here so uh, we so you can continue to do using the data analysis method to get the co various coefficients for the curve fit whether it be parabolic or linear okay and the student can now design and propose mm -hmm. models that matches the actual motion so let's uh, uncheck the, on the last model that it matches so this is the, the this is the model the completed model until a certain stage where it bounces okay so it doesn't it, so you can see that the model actually is pretty uh, accurate okay it matches the motion of the tennis ball then inside the water it experiences up thrust and drag and then eventually it goes up so it still matches the motion pretty well and then eventually when it does this little bounce also it's being modeled and then it enters the water again and then that is where i did not continue the model now imagine if the students were to propose equations like this and being able to understand what the coefficient means i believe there's a lot that the student can benefit from by this kind of computational and mathematical thinking uh, afforded through the tracker modeling pedagogy somebody was talking about book i think was uh, Lei Bao. Uh, essentially i think what can what how can this nice pedagogy or nice tool fit into the book system okay so what i'm proposing mail they are tracker files okay they are TR, trz files completely with a video and analysis and then as a tutor that can skillfully guide the students into the correct model. The teacher can actually look at what the students have done, suggest ways to improve the model, or better still, or if you think the student requires a greater scaffold, you can build a model for them so that the student can actually role model modeling. I like to talk about this thing because it is very deep in my uh, DNA open communication. I find that when students do presentation, it's usually a one-off thing. Eh? And, you know, how are you going to get, you know, like earlier people have talked about, how do you get people to be 21st century citizens of the world, being creative, able to make these convincing presentations. The only way you can do it, as far as I know, in today's context, get the students to do their presentation, film it on YouTube, and get their peers to look at it. You will be amazed how many people will be interested in what you got to say, okay? And uh, of course, uh, a lot of us are probably aware of this already, okay? This is a fantastic website for you to publish your draft journal papers. This is fantastic for non-scholarly works, okay? So you do check them out, okay? I'm not going to spend too much time on this. So in summary, I've covered the what, why, and how, okay? And to allow your students to be more like physicists, I suggest four practices that can be done, uh, but of course subjected to your own skillful tweakings so that it suits your particular context in your system, whether it be universities or, or the under the K-12 system. Okay, uh, I'll, again I'd like to advertise for the tracker community. Okay, currently it stands that myself, uh, Jit Ning, has contributed 10 or more videos which he has shared with his Hua Chong students and he has kindly allowed me to mirror it on my blog so that I can build a model inside it and then we distribute it for free for everyone to reference. Okay? So you can look at the videos, look at the models I've built and uh, the videos are from Jitning, some of them are from Jitning, there are of course other people in the Singapore community uh, and the models are usually get by me. So if you're interested in the videos, feel free to use it, just credit the original authors like Jitning himself and if you want to use the model, just attribute me. Okay, that's all. Okay, uh, and the last part, okay, now as far as practice 2 is concerned, using models, there's actually this thing called the digital library that's been released by the Open Source Basic Group. Uh, if you have an Android or an iOS device, this is called the EJSS Reader App. 
Okay, please do download the free version. It allows you and your students to download any models free up to five. Okay, then to get around the free part, you delete one and then you can download another one. So you, have, you still can have five very nice models to download. Okay, now of course if you pay for it, and uh, then you have no such restriction. Okay, uh, this is the URL to remember because with this URL you will get access to all the physics model that I have built that currently can run under the JavaScript system. So there's no need for any plugins or anything like that. It just runs on a mobile browser. Okay, so with that, uh, thank you very much.